Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on tracheostomy. Introduction It is first performed in the 1700s for upper airway obstruction. Tracheostomy is the technique of creating a hole, the tracheostomy, in the trachea via a neck incision followed by an insertion of an endotracheal tube. The optimal time to perform a tracheostomy in an intubated patient is not known. Indications of tracheostomy Airway obstruction for prophylactic relief or therapeutic treatment. Cricotyroidotomy is more accessible and less likely to bleed during emergency airway access compared with tracheostomy. Airway protection against aspiration to facilitate suction and removal of secretions, prolonged ventilation in ICU. Advantages over conventional tracheal intubation includes easier nursing management, facilitation of mouth care, decreased risk of vocal cord mouth or nasal trauma, improved patient comfort and reduced sedation requirements, bronchial suctioning aided, potential for eating and speaking, Decreased incidence of sinusitis, assistance of weaning by a 30 to 50% reduction in dead space, and reduced airway resistance. No absolute contraindications exist. Relative contraindications include airway obstruction by a laryngeal carcinoma. Consider laryngectomy instead. A temporary tracheostomy may be performed under the first tracheal ring in anticipation of a laryngectomy at a later date. End-of-life decisions may contraindicate tracheostomy. Complications of tracheostomy Early complications include hemorrhage, especially from branches of the anterior jugular veins or thyroid isthmus. It is controlled with direct pressure or sutures. Endotracheal suction of clot obstruction of the airway is usually effective. Displacement of the tube, extrusion or endobronchial intubation, paratracheal placement recognized by inability to ventilate the lungs, blockage by secretions, compression by calf herniation, occlusion of the tube tip against the carina or tracheal wall, subcutaneous emphysema and pneumothorax. Delayed complications include blockage, infection, and ulceration or distension of trachea due to excessive cuff pressures, asymmetrical inflation of the cuff, and tube migration. Late complications include infection, including superficial wound infection, tracheitis and chest infection, tracheal granulomata, persistent sinus at tracheostomy site, tracheal erosion, ulceration, and fistula formation, such as into blood vessels or the esophagus, tracheal stenosis, tracheal dilation, and scar formation. Tracheal stenosis usually occurs level with the stoma or the tracheal tube cuff, although subglottic stenosis may also occur. Surgical resection may be required. It is often related to low-grade infection. It is claimed to be more common with open tracheotomy. Tracheostomy tubes These are curved plastic tubes inserted through the trachea between either the second and third or third and fourth tracheal rings. Older silver uncuffed tracheostomy tubes are rarely used nowadays. Components includes an introducer which is used for insertion, wings attached to the proximal part of the tube to fix the tracheostomy tube in place with a ribbon or suture. Adjustable flange may be present to fit the tube after adapting to the variable thickness of the subcutaneous tissues. A cuff may be present, which is low pressure and high volume. A pilot balloon is present if the cuff is present. 15 mm connector may be present at the proximal end. The tip of the tracheostomy tube is cut square to reduce the risk of obstruction by lying against the tracheal wall if it were to be beveled. Suctioning lumen may be present in some designs. It opens just above the cuff to allow secretions to be suctioned. The inner cannula may be present in some designs as well. It can be replaced once secretions dry out on the inner lumen of the tube. 
and avoids the need to replace the complete tube. There is slight decrease of the internal diameter of the tube. One-way flap valve and fenestrations at the angle of the tube may be present in some designs and allows the patient to speak. Different sizes exist to fit neonates up to adults. A simple classification, cuffed and uncuffed. Cuffed tubes are plastic, low-pressure, high-volume cuffs minimizes tracheal mucosal damage. It allows speech. The cuff may be deflated and the tube occluded with a finger during expiration. May be fenestrated. A separate catheter opening just above the cuff may be present through which oxygen may be diverted using a manual control to allow speech. The catheter may also be used for suction. Uncuffed tracheostomy tubes are either plastic or metal, which is usually silver. A one-way valve may be used to allow speech. Air is drawn into the lungs through the tracheostomy and exhaled through the larynx and the mouth. The strength of the voice is improved by fenestrations in the tube. Tracheostomy button is inserted into the stoma to maintain patency of the tract after tracheostomy is removed after long-term use. It also acts as a route for suction. Tracheostomy care. Humidification of inspired gases should be provided as the upper air passages has been bypassed. It is vital to reduce risk of obstruction by viscous secretions. Tracheobronchial suctioning. Cough is less effective due to the lack of a functioning larynx. Regular tracheal suction is thus necessary. Sterile technique is mandatory. The suction catheter's diameter should not exceed half that of the tracheostomy tube. Suction is applied on withdrawal, not insertion, of the catheter. Measures to reduce the risk of atelectasis. There is risk of basal atelectasis as the natural laryngeal peep is lost with the tracheostomy. CPAP and respiratory exercises that promote deep breathing reduces the risk of atelectasis. Daily cleaning and dressing to reduce risk of infection. Secure fixation with double tapes. In case of displacement, Prepare tracheal dilators, spare tracheostomy tubes, equipment for manual ventilation and tracheal intubation. Provision of a means of communication such as pen and paper. After 3 to 5 days, the tracheostomy tube can be safely replaced. Removal of tracheostomy tube. The initial tube is usually left in situ for at least a week to allow formation of a tract. Before removing the tube, Ensure the upper airway is patent by allowing the patient to exhale past the occluded tube. The tube may be changed over a thin catheter or guide wire. Once decannulated, the stoma usually closes spontaneously within a few days, but surgical closure may be required. Tube change. Insert the new tube with the obturator in place to prevent stomal damage. A guide wire or nasogastric tube may be useful as it may be difficult to find trachea in a new tracheostomy. Prepare for oral tracheal intubation in case of loss of airway control. The tracheostomy tube cannot be left in place for more than 28 days, otherwise it will be classified as an implant thereafter. Traditional surgical tracheostomy Usually lasts 30 minutes, pain is moderate, patient position, supine with the neck hyperextended with pads under shoulders, head ring and head up tilt. Blood loss is usually small but can be large, refer to the complications section. Mode of anesthesia can be either general or local. For general anesthesia, IPPV, ETT with tube bent cranially, LMA if not a difficult airway and no contraindications, followed by IPPV or SV. Local anesthesia is difficult in dyspneic and struggling patients. Refer to the percutaneous tracheostomy section for further details. Preoperative. Confirm the indication of tracheostomy as above mentioned. If tracheostomy is for airway obstruction, secure the airway prior to tracheostomy. If difficult ventilation and oxygenation is critical, Set up ICU ventilator in the operation theater. Use TIVA rather than inhalational anesthetic agents. Stop nasogastric 
feeds if necessary, ensure all equipments are prepared, including the cricotyridotomy kit, and surgeon ready for emergency tracheostomy. Perioperative Use a tape to secure the endotracheal tube to allow easy removal during the case. Make sure the pilot cuff of the ETT is readily accessible. Prior to clean and drape, aspirate the nasogastric tube and clear the oropharyngeal secretions. Drape in a manner to allow the anesthetist access to the endotracheal tube for tube change. Ensure tubings have adequate length for the breathing circuit and gas sampling and analysis. Prior to tracheostomy tube change, pre-oxygenate with 100% oxygen for 3-4 to four minutes. Increase volatile anesthetic agent as applicable. Ensure adequate depth of anesthesia and neuromuscular blockade. Ensure scrubness has the correct tracheostomy tube and sterile catheter mount ready. Open tracheostomy procedure. A horizontal incision is made 1.5 cm below the level of the cricot cartilage. The trachea is located. A vertical incision is made through the second, third and fourth tracheal rings. A slit or circular opening is made in the trachea. The tracheal flap is not done as it has been implicated in causing tracheal stenosis. A tracheostomy tube is then inserted. Prior to tracheal incision, deflate the endotracheal tube cuff so that it can be reinflated and ventilation continued if necessary. Withdraw the ETT into the larynx only in case re-advancement is required. Do not remove the ETT from the trachea until the tracheostomy tube is secure and correctly positioned. Connect the tracheostomy tube via sterile catheter mount to the breathing circuit and observe for a capnograph trace. If the tracheostomy tube position is uncertain, check with fiber optic endoscopy. A false passage may be created during the tracheostomy tube insertion, especially in the obese patient. If tracheostomy tube is malpositioned, remove the tracheostomy tube, advance the ETT back down the trachea and maintain ventilation, and attempt to reinsert the tracheostomy tube. Postoperative management. Regular suction of blood and secretions, humidify inspired gases, analgesia such as paracetamol, NSAIDs and opioids if no contraindication, control protracted coughing with morphine, benzodiazepines or low-dose propofol, antiemetic as necessary, reinsertion of a dislodged tracheostomy tube can be very difficult in the first few days of tracheostomy, oral tracheal intubation is easier to perform, stay sutures may be brought out onto the skin from the trachea and aid subsequent tube reinsertion. Mortality rate of open tracheostomy is less than 1%, but complication rate can be up to 40%. Percutaneous tracheostomy Advantages compared with traditional open tracheostomy, it can be performed in ICU or clinical areas other than an operating suit, does not require a surgeon, it is quicker in skilled hands, fewer complications such as wound infection, and it provides a teaching opportunity for emergency access to the airway. Contraindications include in children, coagulopathy, local infection, and difficult anatomy. Methods Neck ultrasound to exclude thyroid enlargement over the planned entry site. As for the open procedure, perform initial preparation and positioning. Local anesthetic infiltration of 1% lidocaine and adrenaline. 1 to 1.5 cm midline skin crease incision is made over the first and second tracheal rings. The trachea is punctured with a syringe attached to a 14 gauge cannula between the first and the second tracheal rings or lower. The tracheal tube is withdrawn to the level of the vocal cords under direct vision to avoid damage. Use fiber optic endoscopy to confirm correct needle placement. Avoid damage to the scope. Leave the cannula in the trachea. Advance a guide wire through the cannula and withdraw the cannula. Bluntly dissect the superficial tissues using an artery forceps. It may be safer to blunt dissect down to the trachea prior to locating the tracheal lumen with a needle and performing cannulation. Methods for passing the tracheostomy tube over the guide wire into the trachea. Serial dilation method, single dilatation method, balloon dilatation method, 
dilating forceps, and translaryngeal tracheostomy method. Serial dilation method, original Siaglia technique. Serial dilation of the trachea is performed over the guide wire using dilators starting from 12 French up to 36 French. The extent of dilation depends on the size of the tracheostomy tube intended to be inserted. Finally, the tracheostomy tube is passed into the trachea and mounted on an appropriate dilator. Single dilatation method. The superficial tissues and trachea is dilated by a single pass over the guide wire using either a special tapered smooth dilator, Seaglia Blue Rhino, with a progressively larger diameter along its length, or a conical threaded dilator that is screwed into place over a guide wire akin to a self-tapping screw. The tracheostomy tube is then passed into the trachea mounted on the same dilator. Balloon dilatation or blue dolphin. Introduce a balloon dilation catheter over the guide wire and inflate the balloon to dilate the tracheal wall and soft tissues. Advantages compared with dilation using rigid dilators includes decreased risk of injury to the posterior tracheal wall as there is no need for the application of downward force during dilation. Dilating forceps, Greek's method. The forceps is a curved forceps and has a groove in the opposing surfaces of its jaws. Slit the dilating forceps over the guide wire with its jaws closed. The forceps are opened twice. First, it is opened outside the trachea to dilate the soft tissues. It is then closed, passed into the trachea and opened forcibly within the trachea and removed while it is still open. Pass the tracheostomy tube over the wire into the trachea. Translaryngeal tracheostomy method. With the aid of a bronchoscope, pass a guide wire from the trachea to the mouth retrogradely using a percutaneous needle in the trachea. Pass a reinforced flexible tube over the guide wire from the mouth to the trachea and pull it out the front of the neck. This reinforced flexible tube has a cuff at its proximal end and a cone shaped dilator fixed to its distal end. Remove the cone portion and manipulate the tube so that the intratracheal portion bearing the cuff passes cordially to lie in the standard tracheostomy tube position. End tidal CO2 monitoring confirms adequate ventilation. Fiber optic bronchoscopy to confirm correct tracheal placement to assess for trauma to the posterior tracheal wall. Complications as for open surgery. Incidence is low. Tracheal tests and esophageal perforation can occur. These are my references. Thank you.